Now, a Worcestershire filmmaker has launched a new series looking at music production in the county. Jim Lowe's series, On the Record, documents what life's like on the road for our local industry professionals. The first one went live in the week. He's with us in our Hereford studio this evening. Evening's here. Hello, Andrew. So, how did this kind of idea come about? What inspired you to do this? Well, it uh, started with PJ. He's a local filmmaker, and he'd had all this archive film material that had never seen the light of day from local bands going back three or four years. So, I got all these hot, mysterious hard drives, uh, put them up online so that everybody could see them. He was so pleased with it that he came up with this idea of doing more and actually going more in-depth interviews with uh, some of the music makers around the county. So it's now interviews. What kind of people have you been talking to? Um, we've, I've tried to treat the whole project with integrity, so it's not been mates and friends of people. I've really tried to sort of go out there and, and get a wide range of different type of people into music. So we've had sort of the art rockers Karen and Rob from Babel, um, but then we've had sort of the alternative fringe with people like John Joe Murray. We've interviewed yourself, mm. which is coming out later as well. Um, but also we've had David Smalen of the Cohen Brothers, uh, Lewis Spelt Backwards, who's a very unique character in his own right, and poor Bob Jones, I'm saving to the end of the series because he's got such a rich musical heritage that he's got some fantastic stuff to offer. And why do you do this? Because there's no money, is there, in it? No, it's, uh, I'm a music fanatic. I've got 7,500 vinyl albums and singles at home, so I'm just a, a fanatic about music. And because I'm a collector and I'm a big music biography reader, I think that the stars get loads of treatment on in depth on their uh, creative musical process but I think that it's just as interesting to get it from the local people who don't do it for mountains of money they actually do it for the sheer pleasure of creating stuff and I want to document that uh, I've got some clips here of Babel from your first one uh, what kind of got you involved with Babel? Um, we just sort of, um, I'd seen them at a gig spoke to them, liked them and I'd recorded their album launch that's on my YouTube channel as well and um, when they heard what I was doing, they were in interested in doing that. But what was fantastic was their input in the visuals as well. Green screens, fabulous uh, visuals behind it. But I'm as whole as you. Experience is, is important. I've never gone on stage with just a pair of old baggy jeans and a T-shirt. You feel like putting on a show. Yeah. And I, I, people have turned their backs back. Yeah, oh, and that's always been, I think, a part of it. And why not? You bring people into your world, not just with your music, but the whole thing. No one can come and say to me, you're not doing that right. Why don't you do it like that? You should do it like that. I'm stood there, I've got the control. And it's the one place where you can actually do it your way. And the more you get into it, the more you realise that that's right for you. And then you get more confident. The more confident, the better it gets. What does the ripping off bit look like? What do they tell you that entices you in and then what are the mistakes to look out for? Well, look at the small print. Can't be bothered. Oh, yeah, it'll be all right. Look out for the guy who is really so friendly and smiley and wants to, you to be his friend and take you everywhere and take you out to dinner and will say, yeah, we'll pay for this, and then suddenly you realise they're not going to, or they might disappear with your demo because they say they own it. People say, oh, backing track. It's not backing track, it's orchestrations. It's Nick and Rob's put together. I hate the thing when people say it's backing track, and I've put in the vocal arrangements, and they are as important a part of the show as the live musicians, because the arrangements and the vocal arrangements are just as I want them. So there's a lot there on advice there, so I'm guessing you've learnt a lot along the way. Absolutely, and it's what's really good is getting it from a different perspective. So from the sound engineer's perspective, like James Willis, he's got a view about um, equipment needs and um, uh, skills and techniques and what makes a band sound really good on stage. So it's, it's all sorts of different perspectives on it as well. And how long has it been taken to, to cut? Because there, there's all sorts of uh, videos that have appeared on YouTube this week. It's been a massive project. I've got six... 61 videos to launch and we've only launched a few of them so far they're all made they're all ready to go and we're trying to launch it almost like a tv series so we put trailers out it goes out on tuesdays and thursdays at eight o'clock just just to try something different with it 
And if people want to find it, how can they? Uh, it's on youtube.com slash Jim130561 or just Google Jim130561. I come up first on the search engine. All right. But we've also put it on a link on our website as well tonight. So uh, thanks for coming in. OK, thank you, Andrew. BBC Introducing in Hereford and Worcester. With Andrew Marston. Be part of it.